All right. So now new be back. Got a special guest. We got the iconic. Got my dude DJ Slate. Yo, yo. What's going on, King? What's happening, brother? Man, I can't call it, bro. Can't call it, man. So how your morning going, King? It's going great, man. Blessed to be here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You talking me? Right. You want to be to look at the camera? Yeah, I, I would cut. tell everybody be looking at the camera. You yeah. good? You good? So, um, so let's go to the beginning. Let's get into the beginning. So, you originally born and raised from Ohio, right? Sandusky, oh. Ohio, small town. Okay. We really known for uh, our amusement park we have, which is called Cedar Point. Cedar so Point. What's something like Six Flags? Something. Yeah, sort of like Six Flags, but better. But better. Oh, <laughs> six oh, Six oh, Flags on steroids. Oh man. <laughs> oh, okay. So, how was it like? Uh, uh, you know, being you know born and uh, living up there in Ohio. Man, Ohio was cool. You know, if you like the cold weather, had to deal with the cold weather a lot. It was cool. Um, really enjoyed growing up as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Typical kid, wasn't really rich or nothing. Lived the uh, basic lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mother raising two boys by herself, trying to get it out the mud. So you know how that is. You know what I mean? Right. It was a little struggle. But uh, we made it up out of there. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up, man. That was up. So your father wasn't in. Father wasn't around, right? Oh uh, man, no. Nah, my father. I didn't. I had a father. He was around, but not early on. He did some things that, uh, you know, he had to go sit down and do some time for a little bit. Right. But uh, after he completed his little bid that he did, I got a chance to meet him, and it was all great. It's all great. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 So, um, while you was up there, like, uh, how was the schools and all that up there? Uh, the schools was cool. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I played basketball. Average kid sports was very involved in sports. School was cool. Uh, people used to pick on me a lot, but right. you know that's just how school is when you're a kid. Oh yeah, yeah. I always yeah. tell people that uh, kids are the most cruelest, most cruelest, <laughs> brutally honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, it's hard growing up, especially when you don't have a lot of things. Like I, um, I didn't really get like everybody came to school with Jordans. Nikes, um, a lot of my shoes came from Payless. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was what moms could afford at the time, time. You know right, what I right, mean? Right. But you know, kids coming up, they might not understand that. Yeah. You get in a crack match with a kid, oh, first thing they uh, gonna do, they roast your shoes. They go roast your shoes. Like you know you, what I'm like saying? You, like you picked them out. Like you <laughs> picked them out. You know what I mean? And it, it was just crazy, man. But um, I was glad it was like that. You right. know what I mean? Because some of these kids that come up that have everything at the palm of their hand, they don't end up coming out being great kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and true. then their parents have them accustomed to this certain lifestyle at a young age. And when they get older, they might not have the type of jobs that their parents had coming right. up raising them. And they done been accustomed to something and then they ain't able to get it. Right. You know, the next thing, they in the streets. Yeah, big fat, big fat, big fat. That's all like church kids. Like church kids. Church kids be raised a certain way and then they, soon as they get old enough where they make their choices, they Rebel, yeah. Facts, <laughs> big facts. Rebel, rebel, man. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So, um, how did you wind up uh making your way down to the south? Well, my way. That's how the, it all started for me. I was um, after I graduated from high school. I was just like, I had a daughter too at an early age. I had my daughter when I was my senior year in high school. Oh, right, that was for you. So I was like, um, I wanted to do something with my life. You know what I mean? So I wanted to leave my area where I was at, which is Sadusky, because it's like a um it's like a domino effect. You know what I'm saying? Everybody graduate from high school and next thing they doing they hustling. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's pretty much what the area known for. Everybody wanna hustle. I ain't knocking nobody that's hustling, right. but I kinda want it better. You know right. what I'm saying? I knew at the time I had a daughter and I was just trying to change the narrative. So I had the opportunity to move to Columbus, Ohio. I had a brother that was already down there. So I was like, man, let me go to Columbus, Ohio, where my brother at. And I started attending junior college, the same college he was at, which was Columbus State. Right. So, you know, got down to Columbus, started uh, living the lifestyle out that way, was in school, was enjoying school, but still being from Sandusky, a small town in Ohio, yeah. I wasn't accustomed to yeah. the big city life. You know what I'm saying? So I got down in Columbus. And our uh, school was going good for about a year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it got too live. It got too live, man. Started going out, started partying, whole lot more clubs than in Sandusky. Right. Introduced to new people, people from all over the world, world coming right. to this place. You know what I'm saying? 
And uh, I partied my way right out of college. Out of college. <laughs> oh, man. Like, oh, man. It's like, as soon as you get in, like, like those colleges and stuff, there's always those side those side things, those side speed bumps and all that that, that distract you, throw yeah. you off your, your course for a second. You, like, you might have the clubs. Then, you, of course, you got the beautiful women and yes. the drugs and the partying, the whole nine. So, yeah, you will get distracted. Man, I got, I got distracted, man. I wasn't used to seeing women like that. You know, of course, you got the women that you grew up with, but... When you get around people from Michigan, people from down south, people from New York, people from different ethnicities all in one area piled together, you just like, shh. Oh, <laughs> then Ohio State, you know what I'm saying? You in the area where Ohio State at, a Big Ten college, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I lost track, man. Mm. I just started messing with these girls, started partying. I lost the whole. <laughs> I started. I lost track, man. Not I track. just wasn't used to it. Right. You right. know what I mean. So, so, I already know it was a big change of the guard when you left Ohio to Georgia. Oh yeah. So what made you leave Ohio to come to Georgia? Man, well, when I was in Ohio, that's where I started my radio career at at uh, Power One Hundred Seven Point Five WCKX. So they had Power One Hundred Seven up there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we had a Power One Hundred Seven up there. And um, the company that owned us was Radio One. I was working for them. Um, I was part-time at the time, and I wanted to be full-time. I was like, shit, I want to be on the radio every day. I want my own show. So how many hours you were doing a week when you first started? Man, when I first started, I was doing intern, and then I finally got the opportunity to work on the radio. And when I was on the radio, I probably do it like four hours, and it was like two days. Which was the weekends, because yeah. you know, oh, full times yeah. they don't want to be on on the weekends, right? Okay. You know what I mean? So that's how it started out. Um, radio One on radio stations throughout the United States got the opportunity to come to Augusta because they had on the Augusta market at the time. So I was like, let me transfer out. I um, called the program director who was the PD at the time, which his name was Ron Thomas. Hit them up like, hey man, I see y'all got an opening. You know, I'm very interested. Right. So he was like, yeah man, make me a tape. Send me an air check tape because that's how they do when you apply for jobs. Send me an air check tape. Let me sound, see how you sound on the radio. So and I said, an air check tape basically is a mix. That's yeah, a mix. it's just a bunch of different breaks. Breaks, okay. Combine it together, splice them together. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So they can see how you act and okay. have commercials that I produce on there as well. Okay. So he checked out the air check tape, hit me back, was like, yo, we want you down here in Augusta. So I was like, cool. Got the, was really tired of the snow. <laughs> was really tired of the cold weather. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it was just perfect timing with that. And um, got the opportunity to come down south. It was very different for me at the time. You know yeah. what I mean? Coming from a city where the the entertainment and the nightlife was on a thousand. You know what I mean? To come down to Augusta, the nightlife. It was a nightlife. But it wasn't that nightlife. But it wasn't the nightlife that I was accustomed <laughs> to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, had adjust to the nightlife. Like, yeah. the city where I came from, we had artists, A-list artists in the market every weekend. You know what I'm saying? There's sometimes no A-list come here. Yeah, sometimes even through the week. Like, yeah. I didn't rock concerts for Jay-Z, Wu-Tang Clan, mm -hmm. like all the biggest artists you can ever think of. Diddy, you know what I mean? All these big artists that really don't come to Augusta. Yeah. So... When I first got down here, I was kind of depressed because I was like, damn, man, ain't nothing popping down here. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like a culture shock. I'm like, they don't have no artists coming through here. Everybody go to Atlanta. You know what right. I mean? And uh, it took a little while for me to get used to. You know what I mean? Because I just wasn't used to that. And then when I got down here and I was going out to the clubs, it was very different because coming from Ohio, Everybody parties together. You have white people in the club, black people in the club, Asian people in the club. Yeah. A, a mixture of everything versus when I got to the South. It was black. It was just all black, African black. American right. in the club. In the you club. know what I'm saying? Right. And all whites in the club. Yeah. Right. So I, I wasn't used to that. It's kind of like things down here are segregated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It ain't it ain't really like that up north. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Still kinda like that down here. You probably got like maybe one or two clubs that's that's biracial or that I mean that multiple races can come in, but for the most part, it's all black. Yeah. 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 So it, that was hard for me, man. That was a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> I made it work, man. I made it work. So um your first day at the station down this way, how was it? How did everything go for you? Oh, man, my first day at the station. You really want to know how the first day was the at the day, station? The very first day. First day at the station. I had came down here, and um, I guess the guy that was on that used to do the show, 
name was Anthony B. So my first day at the radio station, I'm on the radio, going in, think I'm doing a job, and every time I would answer the phone, man, where Anthony B at? Man, where Anthony B at? I'm just like, I didn't know who Anthony B was at the time. I'm like, man, who was Anthony B? I was like, man, everybody, I'm telling the people the next day, I'm like, yo, everybody calling the radio station, they want Anthony B, and they're like, do, do, do. So come to find out, I replaced Anthony B. Now, it wasn't nothing that I, I said I want to replace this man. It's just like how the business works. Right, works right. But I guess he was, he built his brand and his name. And, you know, that's what everybody was accustomed to. And they weren't really accustomed to the change of things. But then as time went on and they started hearing this voice more and more, right. they sort of got used, got to, used it. to it. And then them, them type of calls was out the door. But... Boy, Anthony B, you made it hard for me, bro. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie, bro. You made it hard for me that first day. You know what I'm saying? I, I kind of wanted to go back home. Right, okay. It was that, it was that tough. Man, it? it was that tough. Oh, it was man. that tough, man. Wasn't nobody calling to do anything or want to even interact with me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, kind of wanted to go back home, bro. Yeah, Cause you was a new person and just everybody didn't know you, so they just yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So who was all DJing that at, on on the on that roster when you first came? Um, when I first who came, was it, who was who was hot around the time? They had um, we had Isis. She was doing the midday show. This girl named Isis. Okay. Yep. Uh, KDO was doing afternoons. I was doing nights. Then after me, it would be this guy, which is my best friend and my son's godfather, Rob Black. You know what I'm saying, Rob Black and um, a guy named Doc. They really took me under their wings and showed me the area, you know what I'm saying? Because I really didn't know nothing about the area. I didn't know how to get around. And they introduced me to a lot of different things, like um, didn't know nothing about paying college. Didn't know paying college even existed till I got here, right. you know what I'm saying? They was like, yo, we got this HBCU, you need to come out. So Doc was going to paying at the time. So he's like, boom, we got this going on. So he introduced me to a lot of people and helped me out as well. But it's so crazy because my grandfather, it's from Augusta. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy. I got family from Augusta. You know what I'm saying? That's my crazy. grandfather grew up on 12th Street. You know what I'm saying? On top of that, my family is the Smiths. They own the grocery store over there, Smitty's. Store. Remember Smitty's? Yeah, Smitty's, yeah. Yeah, they were my peoples. You know what I'm saying? World, man. They had the car wash at the time. You know what I'm saying? So my mom and them used to always come down to augusta when they were kids, were kids. you know what i you mean you know nothing about it i ain't know nothing about it yeah. i did come down when i was a kid and i remember telling my auntie i was like eventually i'm gonna be down in augusta eventually i'm gonna be down in augusta right. so when i got the opportunity to come down to augusta to work she was like remember you used to tell me that when you was a kid you're gonna be in augusta you're gonna be in augusta but when my mom and them was coming down Augusta used to be live yeah. because we would come down with them. We got to stay in the house because we kids, but they would be going out and partying. Party, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. And it was just like, man, how the how time changes because the scene when they was going out was off the chain. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know what happened during the time, but yeah, man, got family from Augusta. Yeah, that, that's, that's that's crazy, man. That's good. Yep. So, um, on your rise, how was the rise of your DJ career in Augusta? How how long did it take you for everybody? Because it don't take that long for everybody down here to know who you are. But yeah, how long did it take you to like get established? At, you know, getting your name imprinted in the city where people know DJ Slate and stuff like that. I think it took really like two to three years to really, you know what I'm saying, to build a brand uh, to get people to be more familiar with me. It was a lot of hard work. Um, I would. I used to come to the radio station during the day and get the truck and just drive the truck around because Ryan was like, if you want to get people to know you, you got to get out in the community. I want you to come up here, get this truck, just go different places. So that so, was the truck was for the, 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 the truck. Yeah. Okay. So I would come get the expedition and every day I would just go hit the hood. So I'm going to the hood. Yeah. If I, <laughs> hey, if you want to get known, you got to go to the hood. Now you got to go to the You know what I'm hood. saying? So I was, to. man, I was everywhere, man. River Glen, uh, Man, I was uh, sunset. I was hitting all the hoods because I was like, if the hood people can remember the name, it's going to be easy it's for me. Easy, you right? know what I'm saying? And once people saw who I was and they could put a face with the name, everything started everything changing. Started you changing. know what I'm saying? Everybody started really rocking with me. And then it was another thing that I did. I was like, man, how can I make my show on the radio pop? So I was like, you know what I need to do? 
I need to play local music. So I came out with the segment called Hometown Flavor, where I would play people from this area music. And that was another way for me to get my name yeah, embedded right, yeah. into the community. You Probably know a faster saying? way, too. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it was real fast. So was anybody else doing the local music thing at the time? Wasn't nobody, nobody doing local so you music. the first one? Yeah, I was the first one yeah, at the okay. time. You know what I'm up, man? Now up. I don't know if anybody was doing it before I came because I went down here. So I, you know, no time when you was here, like when nobody, no, when nobody okay. doing it. I was, I was the first one doing it when I got here, and it was so funny because my competition was uh, Craig Boogie. Craig Boogie, and, okay. And Kid Joe at the time. Kid Joe, okay. And then, you know what I'm saying, all of a sudden, they started doing local music. <laughs> now, hey, I ain't knocking it, because I, I rock with Kid Joe heavy, and I rock with Craig Boogie heavy, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I ain't knocking it, but I was the first one, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and anybody that know about the hometown flavor, they'll tell you, like, so I tell you, well, nobody rocking with us until you came. Until you came. You know what I'm saying? But right. I believe that they seeing how big it was becoming. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they was like, yo, we got to get a piece of this pie too. Right. And I ain't knocking it because if you want to be competitive, yeah. you got to get out there and do things that's being competitive. So Facts. salute to Kid Joe, salute to Craig Boogie. They was only doing something to be to, to be competitive at the time because you got to compete. Yeah, you got to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah because you, know, you don't want to be a DJ that no one books. Yeah, <laughs> you got to compete, man. That's true, man, that's true. That, But that's also, I mean, by... People don't understand by the people that has the power to make those changes. That's why a lot of changes in Augusta don't be made because it's people that be in position to make a certain power where like the power of you can come in and play independent music on the radio to get them, you know, some spins and stuff on the radio. But, you know, but if that wasn't happening, then it just people been taking their music to Atlanta. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's another reason the growth of a community won't grow if money's being taken away from it. Fact. So it won't grow. You know, the population can't grow. You know what Fact. I'm saying? If you're taking all our money to Atlanta, that's why Atlanta grow. Yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. That, that's facts. That's facts. So um, uh, you uh, you you was also doing parties and yep. club club in events. In the club, hosting the clubs, or DJing in the clubs. I had the opportunity to DJ at Tenant Windows when I got down here with the Tenant Windows. Yeah, I've been here. I wasn't here. I wasn't down here when it happened. I'm, I'm not, not from here, but I wasn't down here when Tenor Windows was open. But I've heard a lot about Tenor Windows. Yeah, said he used to go down down there. Oh, he used to go down to Tenor <laughs> Windows, boy. I ain't even gonna lie. I, I seen a lot of uh, I seen a lot of fights. A lot of people get beat up in Tenor Windows now. <laughs> Uh, the, hey, the kids, them kids, that generation of kids, boy, they was off the chain. Oh, that was different. Man. That was different breed. Was different was just, breed. Was, what, what era was it? Was it like the crunk era? Or it was during the crunk era. During the crunk era. Yeah. It Nuck if you buck, Lil John and all that. Man, man. you play Nuck if you buck. You play Lil John, any of that stuff. They was fighting, bro. They was fighting yeah. up in that joint. <laughs> they ain't care. You play uh, Sammy Sam. Oh, they were fighting, bro. Like, oh, O-Dub was oh, like, uh, O-Dub was running the club. You know what I mean? And it, it was it was just crazy because people's parents would be mad at me because their son got beat up or something in there or their daughter got into a fight. And they blame you for They blame me on it. I'm just playing the music. You know what I'm saying? I'm not instigating no fights. It, I, that's the music. Right. They want to go crazy over the right. music. You know right. what I'm saying? And then even like the girls. The girls would come to the club one way, right? Get out the car, come in the club one way, go straight to that goddamn bathroom, change their clothes, be half naked. naked. You know what I'm saying? Naked. I'll be like, what? Damn, come up yeah. in there with sweats and stuff on. <laughs> go change immediately. You know yeah, what I mean? Or uh, have like the little see-through lingerie yeah. thing. Yeah, that man. Thing see-through under it. It was, it was crazy, but Tenor Windows, it was, uh, it was good. It was good money at the time. You know, a lot of people like to do the teen stuff because they don't have nothing to do, and it's a fast way of generating income. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, y'all was doing the Power Fest. No, we did Mayfest. Mayfest. Y'all did yeah, Mayfest. Yeah. 90, uh, 97 did uh, Power, Power 107. Power 107. Yeah. Yeah. That was iHeart, okay. which was Clear Channel at the time. Right. They did Power Fest. Yeah, and they own, and 107 is owned by, uh, I heart. I heart. Okay, yep. cool, okay, cool. So how uh when you first start doing the Mayfest, like how was like how did you get introduced to them? I know of course by the job, but your first Mayfest, I know you don't Man, one. my first Mayfest it was it was crazy, man. Like I just wasn't used to seeing so many people out in the park. Um to they me they had it at the air, uh at the They had it at May Park. Okay. 
May Park, man, and it, it was it was crazy. Like I'm talking about people from everywhere came out to Mayfest. And it was smart marketing because Mayfest was free. Yeah, it was free. You know what I'm saying? It was free. And bro, like Mayfest really changed my perspective on Augusta, Georgia. Like I was, I was like, wow. Because all the people just finally came, out, like started coming out yes, and stuff. Yeah. Yes, and some of the acts that we had, like people really enjoyed it. But more importantly, it was really for the kids because the kids don't really get to go to concerts or right. see artists. So and man, then y'all had it for free too, free. man. That's that's like all really day, dope all day out in the park. And then it, these wasn't no old artists y'all were bringing either. No. Y'all was bringing new people like Ti, uh, Bone Crusher, because you got to think we were in the crunk era at the time. Mm -hmm. Little John, Lil John. Oh man, the list goes on, yeah. man. Little Boosie, you know what I mean? I remember Little Boosie coming and they tore the fence down because they wanted to see Little Boosie. Man, it, it was just Mayfest. I love Mayfest. Yo. So, um, how long Mayfest was going before it, it, they stopped it? Uh, Mayfest still going on. It's still going. On. I know because yeah. of the COVID. Yeah, but well, yeah, it's it's last couple years they haven't they, had it because COVID. They have it, but yeah, it's been it's been going on strong. Yeah, cause it's, I know it's they, not as many people. Yeah, like when I first got here, that came out. Not that many people no more. But uh, I guess some people just like, man, I ain't about to stand in the heat. Right, right. <laughs> so what was first, the, pay, the Mayfest or the Powerfest? What came first? I think Mayfest came first because okay. you got to remember at the time before iHeart, they used to be called Clear Channel, before they came into the market, it was just uh, it was just Foxy, which was owned by Davis Broadcasting. Davis Broadcasting, yeah, right, right, you right. You know what I mean? And they had Fats over there at the Fats time. Fats right. So once Fats and them share left to go to iHeart, they needed to do an event, and then that's when they came up with Power Fest. Power so Fest. Mayfest was first. Mayfest has been running the longest, the longest, and Mayfest is still going because Power Fest isn't going anymore. Yeah. But that was something that Fats and them brought to the table when they got over there. Like, yo, we need to do a festival too, and then, you know, yeah. I'm not knocking it. You got to be competitive. Yeah. Once again, you know what I mean? My competition doing it. I got to do something too. Right. You know what I mean? Because everybody's fighting for numbers. Right. I know I talked to, uh, talk to a couple of DJs. I practically know all the DJs in the city. But I was talking, to, I was asking them about the, the May, about the Mayfest. Like, because uh, the year before the COVID, they didn't have it. Uh, yeah. Something happened. Um, um, and I guess it was, they were saying about the cost of the artist that went up. Yeah, because you know you paying artists this much money. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, and that's another thing. Like the community don't know. Like we don't get paid nothing for Mayfest. We don't make no money off. Y'all don't of get Mayfest. paid for Mayfest. The, well, the jocks, the jocks. Yeah, yeah. We get paid, yeah. but as far as like us taking money from the community because it's free. Right. We're not charging people. We're not making the radio station ain't making no money yeah, off of all. Mayfest. Right, but they're spending money. You gotta pay somebody to do the sound, right? You know what I'm saying? You got security. You gotta pay security. Right. You gotta pay to get May Park. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta pay all the people that's working, that's helping us out, that's not volunteering. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. You gotta pay the artists. Yeah. You gotta pay. <laughs> you gotta. Y'all have multiple. Y'all yeah. have one. Y'all have like a couple of. Yeah. Them. You yeah. gotta. And when I say pay the artists, you gotta pay for them to come. Pay you gotta hotel. pay to put them in a hotel. You know pay what I mean? Take you gotta their pay they, they, um, their transportation. All these things add up. So it's like the radio station really was kicking out a lot of money to make Mayfest happen. Yeah. But people don't see that on the other side. They just think, oh, they the radio station get the money. No, they gotta pay for the money. Pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they gotta pay for it, man. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So, um. Now I gotta ask you a question. Yeah. We gotta get you know we gotta, we gotta get into it now. So, what led to the departure of you leaving? Man, that's the biggest question that everybody in the world want to know. Oh yeah, you know I'm gonna ask that. Everybody wants be to bad. know. I gotta ask. Everybody wants to know. So, what's why the, what, was the, what, what what made you leave? Man, just um, just got older, got more wiser. Uh, a lot of people think that we're on the radio. We make a lot of money. Um, you got to remember that Augusta is a small market. It's not a big market. Right. If you're in New York, you're going to make good money. If you're in Atlanta, you're going to make good money. You're in L.A., you're going to make good money. Uh, for me at the time, what made me want to leave was the money. 
You know, I was I, I just felt like I paid my dues. You know what I'm saying? And I was only making twenty to twenty one thousand dollars a year. Mm. I, I, to be honest with you, I made it look good. Yeah. But when I get off that mic and I go home, I was really living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, looking at you the bills, like ah. yeah, yeah, like. And I just got tired of it, man. And I, and I felt, I felt like now was the time to departure because my son, he's a freshman. My son had to share his dad his whole life with the community, and I and I wanted to start giving my son more things in life. Like I want to go on, I want to go on nice vacations. Couldn't really do that, right. you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't making no no money like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And. and I just I got tired of it, bro. Like twenty thousand, twenty one thousand, yeah. and it was embarrassing too. Like I go get my taxes done, tax lady be like, "Man, I thought you made a lot of money. You don't, yeah. you don't, you don't make no money over oh, there." Yeah, right, yeah. Then it came to a time where I wanted to get a house. Went to, to the to the people to get the house. Right man, up. you ain't making enough money, man. You need to you you, you ain't making enough. And you been there for years. I've been there for years. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I ain't knocking knocking nothing at the radio station because you never know when you're gonna need them need people. Them exactly. And you never know where these people might be in certain other positions one day. Better positions. Better positions. Right. So it's like I don't have no hard feelings. I'm not mad at the radio station. You know what I'm saying? But if you wanna do better in your life, you gotta you gotta move on and it was just really time for me to move, to move on. You know? Um they we did sit down and talk. Um, Kevin Perry, he's one of the owners. He's the son's owner. He, he he before I even quit, Kevin was like, "Man, what's your price? If they have your price, what's your price? I want to work it out." You know what I'm saying? But I just the love wasn't there for me no more. You know what I'm saying? I I, I sort of fell out of love with it. Right. You know what I mean? It wasn't fun no more. And anytime something's not fun to you anymore. And it's like a job. Right. Oh, it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know that feeling. It, it, <laughs> it's, it's time to move on. Yeah. So I just want to uh, send a big shout out to the Perrys, Kevin Perry, um, Velvet Perry, Mr. Perry. Just thank them for the opportunity because y'all really gave me an opportunity when y'all could have let me go. And um, I wish I could have stayed longer. And yeah. I, I ain't even going to front. I would be interested to come back. Yeah. If this makes, makes sense. sense. Makes sense. You know what sense. I'm saying? Yeah. So, because y'all do because breakdown breakdown for some people they'll think that all oh, DJs be complaining about getting paid and this and that y'all don't do nothing but just play music mm -hmm. what would you say to people that say that um nah we do more than play music <laughs> y'all y'all exactly. they on the outside looking exactly. in exactly you know it's a lot that comes yeah. into play with making the radio station work right. music is one part of the pie right you know what I'm saying but being a DJ you gotta go produce commercials you got to do voiceover work. You know what I'm saying? You got to put the commercials in the system that you hear running. It's a lot comes with being a DJ more than right. just playing music oh, yeah. on that radio. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So it's a lot of hard work, man. Yeah. And it, and, it, and it also determines what DJ, you, which DJ position that you're in, whether it's a radio DJ, a club DJ, or uh, uh, in-house DJ or whatever, different things like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But cool. hey, if, if y'all look, if y'all watching this, Mr. Perry, Melvin Perry, Kevin Perry, <laughs> hey, if we can work something out, you know what I'm saying, that makes sense. I'm down to come back, you come know back. what I'm saying? I love oh, yeah. Foxy, I'm down to come back. <laughs> yeah. But uh, just had to move on. And also, you know, uh, shout out to uh, Terry Monday. He's the um, Senior Vice President of the Program, and shouts out to him, too, because he was like, like, the day that I left, bro, I just was, I just quit. You quit? I just, I just like, you know what? I quit. No notice, no nothing. <laughs> no notice, <laughs> no nothing. It's just your breaking point. And let me tell you something. When you get older, you realize, and to me, after I did it, I felt good about it, but I felt bad too because I should have gave them the proper notice. A proper notice, right. you know what I'm saying? And for me, I accept when I do wrong, and that was wrong on my part to just quit right. and not give them no notice, knowing that they've been so good to me, you know what I'm saying? But it was just, I was frustrated, man, and it was just a lot going through my mind at the time, you know what I mean? So that's why I did it that way. And like um, Terry Monday, which is the uh, vice president of the program, he was like, man, you should have called me, you know, you know what I'm saying? You should have called me so we could have did something, right. you know what I mean, work something out, but I didn't. I was just like, you know what? 
fed up. Uh-uh, I ain't calling nobody. And they reached out to me. Like, you know, Velvet called me. Kevin called me back. I actually had called Kevin before I did quit, but he didn't answer the phone. And then when he called me back, I didn't answer the phone, man. And, uh, man, I'm sorry. You know, wrong is wrong. And I, and I accept it. You know, being an adult, you got to go about things the right way. I should have gave y'all the proper notice, and I didn't. And I take full responsibility for that. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's, what's up. that's all love, man. Especially when, you, especially when you can, you know, apologize for your wrongs on that. That's that's all love, man. Yeah, man. That's all love. So, um, what did you what? So, what were some things that you did out um life after Foxy? Yeah, life after Foxy, it's been good. I've moved on to Bridgestone. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so now I'm at Bridgestone. Um, that's a lot different. I'm not working as much. We only work 15 days out the month. So, oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. 15 days to just chill, be with my son, do more things with him. The money's good. Get paid every week. Every week. You oh, know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah. now I'm used to getting the check every week right. versus the just getting two checks a month, right. which was the first of the 15th. First of the 15th. So um, it's changed my lifestyle, man. I've been able to go get me a brand new vehicle. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm driving in a right. 2022 Silverado now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's just all because... The banks now, they look and they be like, okay, now you're making now more you money. Making money. You, gotta, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. You got a good job. Boom, we can give you things. So yeah. I'm, I'm a lot more happier. Right. But, you know, I still miss that radio. Right. That just, don't you hate that? It's like, okay, the, the job, like, okay, so I mean, it's like the radio job for someone. Okay, would you would you tell someone if they want to be a DJ, still make that a passion in the career, even though you don't get paid as much in certain markets? You don't get paid as much. But you do have good perks. Yeah, you got a lot of good perks. A lot of good perks. A lot yeah. of rarity because you you there Concerts with the artists. there with the artists. Yeah, there like with mainstream the artists. artists. Yep. Like you just like you around all the new music. You around people that regular people just can't get around. Right. Yeah. Cause I know you've been around a bunch of record of his ex. Yes. Regular like everybody. Everybody. Yeah. I, man, anybody that want to do radio, if that's your passion, that's what you want to do. Do it. I'm not gonna tell somebody not to do it because right. I did it. Right. You know what I'm saying. Right. And when I was doing it, I didn't care about the money. I just loved what I did. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So anybody out there that want to do radio, go ahead and take your initiative to get in and do it. Right. Your, your story might end up being different than mine. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I came down here to go the back door to get into Atlanta. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So somebody might start out in Augusta, which is a small market, and boom, work right. their way up to the big market. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's all about what your plan is. Right. You know, and how you execute your plan. So I can't sit here and tell people, hey, don't do radio. Uh -uh, nah, 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 they don't pay no money. No, nah, if that's your passion, do it. Do it, right. You right. know what I mean? And right. then a lot of us that's been doing it for so long, we got to leave. I, it, it's actually a good thing that I left because I was able to open the doors for, for other, other people. people. Right, yeah. Should, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Like yeah. I remember uh, Sterling Knight. He wanted to be on the radio. He was part time. And I, and I would always tell Sterling Knight. Yeah, DJ Nightmare. DJ Nightmare. Yeah. I would tell him, like, your time coming, bro. Just be patient. Be patient, right. You know what I mean? And then when I knew at the time I was lining up stuff for Bridgestone to work there, I was like, yo, Nightmare, you're going to have an opportunity sooner than you think. <laughs> and everybody, you know what everybody, I'm everybody, thought, everybody just thought you were just talking. Yeah, I was like, you're going to have this opportunity sooner than you think. Man, what you talking about? Hey, man, just just <laughs> keep doing what you do. You know what I mean? I didn't want to let the cat out the bag because sometimes when you let people know early what you're doing, it, it always, they might go and tell it and then the word spread. Like, I ain't even let my ace boom coon know, which is DJ Sellis. You know what I mean? Shout out Sellis, my yeah. boy. And I was training Sellis at the time. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And he was hurt. When I when I left, he's like, no, man, I ain't learned everything yet. You just about to teach me. I was like, sell us. I got to go. I got to make this move. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> and then, um, you know, once I left, Nightmare took my spot. And Nightmare was like, man, it's time for me to go on. So once he left, he opened the door for sell us. So now it's like, sell us is the man. Yeah. And I remember, like, sell us, salute to this dude, hard worker. Yeah. Grind hard. Grind hard. Good dude, man. Sellers will give you the clothes off his back. He like, sure will. Good man. dude. Like, man, a lot of money that I made in Augusta was because of Sellers. Um, he'll have a gig. He might not be able to do it, or he got to do something. He needs somebody to fill in. He'll hit me up. Hit you up. He'll pay me. Uh, also, like, before I left the radio station, we was doing Truth. 
Sellers was paying me out his own pocket. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't going to find a lot of stand-up dudes like like that. that. that, You know what I'm saying? And paid me my fee, what I wanted, with no questions asked out of his pocket. So I got to give Sellers some love. Thank you, Sellers, for everything that you do. Thank you for everything that you still do for me in my life. Like, you're a genuine dude, bro. Like Awesome dude. Genuine dude. And, I, and I'm glad now that he's in position because at one point he was on the outskirts. Yeah. yeah you know he, told me, he told me. He told me. It was hard for him to get in. He was like, I, I interviewed him. Yeah. He, he gave much praise to you. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, you you a nightmare. Like, y'all was like the only ones that really looked out. Because yeah. people don't understand the DJ game is just like the rap game. Yep. It's very competitive. It's very competitive. And, and people are not going to look out for you. People are not going to tell you anything to boost your DJ career up higher than theirs. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so salute, salute to Sellers, man. Y'all make sure y'all keep supporting him. And uh, I see a lot of great things coming from Sellers. Oh, yeah, you know man. What I'm saying? Oh, and yeah. He, he kind of reminds me of myself. I ain't gonna say kind of remind me. He reminds me of myself. He came under your wing. You know what he I'm was saying? Under your wing. He yeah. came up under your umbrella. Type and he's, thing. he's passionate about music right he's passionate about what he do so i see a lot of great things happening for him down the line man oh yeah i man. see a lot of great things and he knows everybody in the community he know everybody everybody and it's like when you know everybody in the community you can't lose yeah you can't lose bro you know what i'm saying <laughs> you can't you know everybody yeah he know everybody so salute to him man we're gonna see a lot of big things happening for that brother man bro. a whole lot we're gonna support the hell out of him too got to got to man got to support people in the city because they basically giving a lot of a lot of the artists opportunities with their music and yeah. he's been interviewing a lot of people on yes. on, 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 the, on the on radio station so he's trying to do a lot of stuff where he's trying to change me and him talk, he's trying to change a lot of things at radio because a lot of radio, he, from what his words, is a lot of politics behind radio. A lot of politics. And there's a lot of people that's there need to make way for some new ideas and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing it. He's you know, definitely he, doing, he's it. doing it. He's doing it. He's, he's doing, doing it, bro. So, um... Uh, you you work so you have worked with like the Flacos and everybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, man, Flacco's like still my partner now, man. Shout out to Flacco. Shout man. out Flock. I talk to him all the time. You know what I mean? Like I rock with everybody, whether they whether we on the same station or not. You right. know what I'm saying? Just know when it's time to be competitive, I'm gonna be competitive. You, go, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I, it's just the nature of the business. I'm competitive, but yeah, man, I, I rock with Greg Nice. Shout you know what Greg I'm saying? Knight. Shout out to Greg Nice. He's a beast on the ones and twos. Like I said, I rock with Craig Boogie. Shout out Boogie. I rock with Kid Joe. Shout out Joe. You know what I'm saying? Rock with Sellis. Rock with Flacco. Rock with Anthony B. Like everybody that was here before me, man. Salute to them. I rock with them all. Rock with Fats. Rock with Miss Monique. A lot of people don't know, but Miss Monique, her son and my son grew up together. We we kept that on the hush for a mm. very long time. You know what I'm saying? But they grew up together, so they're like salute. friends or something. Yeah, they real good friends, real good, real friends. good friends. You know That's what I'm saying? Up. Her son would stay the night with my son. My son stayed the night with her son. She'll watch my son. I will watch her son. And a lot of people don't know that, but man, I rock with everybody, man. You know what I mean? You can't you can't hold grudges. And you can't dislike people that work at different radio stations because y'all got to remember at the end of the day, we're DJs and we do not own these radio stations. So right. it's like, why well, hate somebody? Right. You know what I mean? And I'm going to be competitive with you. Right. But I, I rocks with everybody, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man, that's what's up. That's a beautiful thing, man. So um, what are some things about the DJ world? Cause I know people still probably reach out to you, oh, yeah. uh, you know, about helping them out giving them advice and different things like that. What are some things that you miss about it, about radio, and things that you don't miss about radio? Man, uh, I miss DJing. You know what I'm saying? I miss, like, I ain't even touched no, I ain't touched no DJ equipment since I left radio. Seriously? Seriously. No, you ain't going to do no warm up. I ain't did no warm up, <laughs> bro. I ain't download no music. Like I used to wake up every day, download me. I ain't download no music. Like I ain't did nothing, nothing pertaining to it. I miss DJing. I miss getting. I do miss being on that radio, talking to the people, pumping the city up before the club. Like I miss that. And uh, man, I wish I could get it back. But uh, yeah, you know, I miss that a whole bunch. I miss um interviewing artists you know artists coming to the radio station i miss that part of the game things that i don't miss is i do not miss 
doing the office work during the day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't miss that. You know what I'm saying? I don't. They had us doing this thing where you have to fill out affidavits. And it was, um, you were pitting numbers in the computer. And I hated that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't miss that part of it. Um, I don't miss the getting yelled at part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you get yelled at? Oh yeah, for the like what for ratings or, or uh, bad yeah, show you get, or you something. You get rated, yelled at for ratings. You get yelled at if you're uh, um, trying to do special things for clients that you shouldn't be doing. You get like, yelled at. Y'all have for a that. certain certain rapport. You got to go by. Yeah. So if you go outside of that, they own you. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't got my fair share of getting yelled at. <laughs> I ain't even gonna say and lie to you. Now. <laughs> They went out the air though, right? After the air. The oh, day. they don't do it to you on the air, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah after the day, that's when you hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You remember your first chewing out? Oh, man. You which, remember the which, which one? <laughs> well, I've been chewed out so many times, man. So many times. It's just the nature of the game. Uh, the nature man. of the game, right. It's the nature of the game, right. Man. I ain't gonna be the last one that get chewed out because you know people coming in, they gonna get chewed out too. Right. Because you gonna hit that wall. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Especially because especially you wanna you wanna do stuff for people and you wanna especially you know, the more popular you are in the city, everybody want you know, want this, want this. Hey man, slide man, spin my rate my my song, man, on yeah. the radio, man, this and that. Like he had the power to actually do it, like anytime you want for some reason, but I guess people have to, they realize later on, understand that, you know, everybody doesn't have it like that or whatever. Yeah. So, but. and the, our artists got to understand it's a process. Right. Radio's a process. You know what I'm saying? Like, the DJs don't have the authority to really play your record when they want to play your record. Right. Everything has to go through a program director. And a lot of people don't know that because they're not educated on the business side right. to know that. They right. think. I send a DJ my record, he could go ahead and play it. Not necessarily. They got rules to follow too, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, but what they can do is take your record and get it to the proper people that can make that decision, which would be the program director. Right, 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 right. So what's the changes in music and the, just the music business as a whole that you see 10 years from, 10 years ago to 10 years now? Like what's the difference between like Man. far as the marketing, the, you know, the whole night? Cause you've been in the radio, you, you've you been around everything, so you know Social what they are looking for bro. and stuff like that. Social media has changed the game. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, cause you gotta remember back in the day, we was just on MySpace. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, TikTok. TikTok. Of course, a lot of artists now today are getting noticed from TikTok. TikTok, right. You know what I mean? So the social media has really changed the game. Um, man, I wish we'd have had social media like it is now Back when then. I first got in radio because ain't no telling where I would be at. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you done met so many audio, met so many people. Yes. Yo, 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 your page would have been stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even, even the, yeah, uh, crazy. Even like what you do in the videography part, mm -hmm. like videographer wasn't big like that back in the day. I mean, they had it, but you had big Glocky yeah, camcorders, yeah, Glock you know what cameras. I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And now today, it's like... Small compact cameras. Small compact cam cameras. And you guys are like the future, and y'all dictate what the culture and how big somebody gonna be because y'all putting the image mm -hmm. out, you know what I'm saying? Right. See, you got the Bel Air? Yes. <laughs> Bel Air, man. Bel Air game. Bel Air, man. You know what I'm saying? Salute to all my people over there, Bel Air. You know, I always represent the brand. I need all y'all to head to your favorite liquor store, get your favorite bottle of Bel Air. You know what I mean? And always make sure that you drink responsibly, man. Drink responsibly. And we, we got this blue bottle out. Everybody going crazy for the blue now. You know what I mean? Shouts out to all my Bel Air brothers worldwide, all my Bel Air sisters worldwide. And Bel Air, thank you for everything that y'all do for me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm going to continue to support the brand. Man. So how that come about? Man, uh, the door opened up for Bel Air. When they first came out with Bel Air, it was all about the DJs. Mm -hmm. You know, they were trying to figure out how could they get this brand out at the time. And then, you know, Ross had signed his situation with Bel Air. And it was like Ross always rocked with the DJs. Mm -hmm. So they was like, we're going to go ahead and get the important DJs out of every market. We're going to make them Black Bottle Boys. You know what I'm saying? So I'm an official Black, black bottle, bottle Boy. boy. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not the only one that's a Black Bottle Boy. It's a lot of people that's Black Bottle Boys or Black Bottle Girls throughout the world. But it was another way to help get the brand out there. 
And, you know, we, we did our part at one point in time. We get the brand out there. It's out there now. It's a household name. Everybody yeah. rocking with it. So now they're using the artist to do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Allowing them to help get the brand out there and push the brand. So, um, like I said, man, I appreciate uh, the people that brought me into the Bel Air family. My dog, Young Sav. Young Sav, I wouldn't be a Bel Air boy if it wasn't for you, bro. <laughs> so, thank you so, so much, man. Thank you so, so much, man. Like, everybody can't wear the coat. Everybody can't get the coat. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, if you got a jacket, you got a Bel Air jacket, you, you something special. You're something so, special, right. Man, I appreciate it. appreciate it because, you know, y'all didn't have to. But uh, we got to open the doors for more. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, Now that I'm a Bel Air boy, I want to vouch for other DJs out here. Maybe we could get my boy Sellers to be a Bel Air boy. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, So it's all about opening doors, man, and, and building the culture. And uh, thanks to Rick Ross, man, everybody in Rick Ross camp. Thank you, Ross, for uh, making me a Bel Air boy. And just thank you for everybody over there at Bel Air that sent me the product because I ain't got to. Man, that was up, bro. That was up, bro. All right, so for a slide out, man, any love you want to shout out, and how can they get in contact with you for any advice, bookings, or anything? Man, you can always hit me up on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, DJ Sly Tay. That's D J S L Y T A Y R one word. Also, check me out on YouTube. Go subscribe to the page, DJ Sly Tay Podcast Show. Also, rock with my dot com, DJ com. Got a lot of great content on there. Um, if you're interested in anything, just hit me in the DM on my Instagram page. That's the most easiest way to get in contact with me. I'm on Facebook, but I really don't do too much on Facebook because Facebook be telling on you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Everybody. I, I get on Facebook, but I ain't on it like that. You can look me up. Uh, just type in DJ Sly Tay or Sly Tay DJ. And um, some things will pop up on that. And uh, I just want to shout out to the young world, man, to the future DJs, future on their personalities, and a salute to everybody out there that's doing their thing, whether you're an artist, whether you're a videographer, or whatever position that you play in the entertainment business. You know what I'm saying? And I got to shout out to Jay Paul. Thank you for taking the man, opportunity most definitely, to man. Uh, get me down here for the interview, man. Most I appreciate definitely. you. Glad you took our time. Hey, <laughs> man. <laughs> hey, when Yogi, when my manager say... Hey, man, I need you to do something. We're going to make time. Make some time. And, and that's another thing. Everybody that, that want to get at me, because a lot of people hit me up personally, right. I got to respect the role of my manager. Right, so right, it's right, like, right. you can't hit me up in my DM asking me for something. Everything right. got to go through the manager. Yeah, right. So hit my manager up, which is crazy, Yogi. Right. And um, Shout out, Yogi. Once he set it up. It's, it's, it's going down. Yeah, man. Yogi, my dude, man. Yeah, me and Yogi gonna be rocking for a long time. My yeah. dude, man. Good dude, good dude. Okay, that's what's up, man. Any love you want to shout out? Oh, uh, man. Shout out to, uh, like I said, DJ Sellers, man. I need everybody to make sure y'all support DJ Sellers. Whatever he got going on, uh, he the future of this. Um, shout out DJ Prince Sean, another young DJ from here. Salute. Shout make out sure Prince Sean. Make sure y'all support Prince Sean. Um, shout out DJ Vision, first female DJ. Support her. Shout out my boy DJ Sam. Make sure y'all support him, man. Just all the up and coming DJs out there grinding. And if I didn't give you a shout out, I might not know you personally. That don't mean that I forgot about you. Cause some people will look at it and be like, man, ain't even shot me out. So shout out to all the DJs in the CSRA, whatever club you DJ at. Uh, shout out to all the DJs at Garden City. Shout out DJ Quet. DJ Hayes. I know I'm missing a lot of DJs, but these are people that I just talk to on the regular. Oh, regular right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. So shout out to all the DJs in the CSRA. DJ Kinetics. Uh, DJ Quay out of Thompson. Shout out to all the DJs, man. Salute.